Welcome to Face to Face. And today we have a special show. We're going to talk about Colombia. We're going to talk about the peace process. We're going to talk about what's happening with uh, social leaders who have been uh, killed in, uh, in many weeks and months. Also the protests who are happening in New York um, with uh, uh, Elizabeth. And uh, welcome to Face to Face. Thank you for inviting me. How are you? Good, good. So Elizabeth, give us a little bit uh, of an overview of the current situation, and then we will go back in, in the past uh, okay. of this process. And um... uh, Let's say that uh, in the last year, that has been very difficult because of the COVID all over the, all over the world, but in Colombia, um, the, it's been very, very difficult because since the government have no control of uh, the country, basically, yeah. Um, but uh, criminal uh, groups uh, that um, are associated with um, narco dealers, but mainly also with um, some companies uh, that try to force uh, projects in regions that uh, traditionally were um, occupied by the FARC now are in their hands. So uh, all the people from the countryside are in hands of paramilitary groups by now, and it's very violent, uh, assassinations all over the place, uh, threatening um, internal uh, movement of whole populations, large uh, um, groups of populations from one side to another one, uh, running from, from their lives, basically. So the displaced, the, the displacement are, are happening again, because it was already- Yes. Yes, especially, for example, in areas where the former FARC members were located yeah. to, to start their reincorporation to the society. Um, these places have uh, been uh, particularly hard to stay because of the paramilitary groups start to threaten them. They already have been killed around mm, 200 members, wow. ex-members of the FARC. Um, and, you know, nothing happened. Uh, you never found uh, the perpetrators, you never found uh, any solution for this. So for you, what, what is, do you think the government itself is engaged on that uh, process? Or do you think it's, it's uh, something who, who got out of control and it's running from other places? Well, um, the government itself, you see, it will be very hard to accuse uh, President Duque, for example, yeah. of saying President Duque is killing these people. Uh-huh. But uh, President Duque belongs to the party of the former President Uribe, yeah. who we already know his tactics, uh, his war on the guerrillas and all these things. They were using the same um, tactics, uh, tactics uh, to scare people, to kill people, um, to take the land from their uh, owners and um, start this, all these uh, displacements. So basically, we come back to the same situation, but the worst problem uh, that this government have is that this government also, uh, since they start, since they were in campaign to, for the presidency, they promise that they will finish the peace accord, yeah. right? That they will not just not implement it slowly or something like that. They say that they never agree with the peace accords yeah. and they were looking to destroy the peace accords um, from the foundations, from the uh, trying to discredit the peace accords, trying to discredit the, the uh, transitional justice, yeah. trying to discredit the commission of truth, yeah. and all these things has been uh, over and over. So, of course, I think that the government is actively engaged in this. Yeah, and and then so to to go back a little bit to explain, then uh, the, the Colombia has been signing a peace uh, agreements between the FARC and and the, the and and the government and and the, the country. Well, um, the peace accords were uh, signed by the state of Colombia, and this is this is one of the things that is important to, um, let's say, to make 
clear that even that it was the prior government, uh, Mr. Santos, President Santos, uh, who signed the peace ag agreement, the, the agreement we si was were signed between the state, the Republic of Colombia, and the FARC. So therefore, what the whole world is expecting this government that Mr. Duque have, two year, you know, already for two years, is to implement the peace accords. Uh, these peace accords have a um, very crucial uh, part that is to uh, get justice for the victims, get the truth, but the justice system that they are implementing is something that is called transitional justice that uh, is not an invention of Colombia. This has been doing it in so many yeah. peace processes, yeah. you know. So it's not, this is not like um, the government yeah. in, the, in all the, let's say, the population that is um, agreeing with the government that this is a scam and that this is a, something that is not justice. This is, this is something that is proved to bring peace and progress in in um, also, yeah. yes, uh, to in different places of the world, okay? Yeah. But, but the problem basically is that um, the, this government, um, even before they got into power, and looks like they got into power by uh, fraudulent ways, you know? Yeah. So they um, try to discredit the situation because I think that corruption, when it's war, it's easy to hide the corruption. And so when it's peace and when you need more uh, investment in social areas, in education, in health, in, in housing, in infrastructure, and the money is not anywhere, and then you start to look at all these problems of corruption that Colombia has, it's better for them to have a country that is always in chaos. So that's what they promote in chaos. I have... I I have to, to make a parallel between uh -huh. what's happening in Colombia uh, with Duque with uh -huh. what happened to the U.S. Oh, with yeah. Trump, because it, it's after Obama, Trump was, was in some way elected to destroy everything was being done through Obama. And what, if I understood well uh, what you describe it, was exactly the same technique used yes. in Colombia um, where Duque was here to remove everything Santos has done through the peace process and so on and so forth. Are, are you missing something? No, um, basically it, it is a good parallel to have, right? Okay. Because, um, because uh, Mr. Trump uh, has been elected to, been elected to, um, uh, he, or so he said, <laughs> to destroy everything that Obama put in place because yeah, it was yeah. uh, oh, making America yeah. not that great. <laughs> so the problem with uh, also with Colombia is the same. Um, or everything that, has, that were put in place for uh, Mr. Santos, right? Yeah. That Mr. Santos used to be um, uh, from the Uribe's party is not um, something that Mr. Uribe agreed uh, and then, therefore, his mandate is to destroy everything and create chaos, uh, give the possibility to these governments that are a little bit into the extreme right side to, you know, to destroy everything and to show all these conspiracies that are not uh, true, but are very easy to make them so popular because, you know, it is easy to talk about um, a hoax in a, pa in a piece that is not a piece really and all these things, but they don't show, they don't have no, they are not obligated to show any proof of what they say. So basically that's the same thing that Mr. Trump do, does. It's the same situation and, and it's the same situation in Brazil with, with uh, after Lula Bolsonaro. And, and, and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to, to, to show and to, it's a little bit to go over the Colombian very specific situation where to see it as a, a global direction then some countries have been faced with the, the level of increase of the, the right-wing uh, uh, parties and try to, to manipulate and, and, and corrupt the whole uh, situation. I, I, you know, this morning we were discussing this with some friends yeah. uh, and I was um, saying that this formula of discredit uh, progressive uh, governments or progressive movements or um, let's say 
a peace agreement like in our case, has been used all over the world for so many years yeah. by governments like United States that interfere yeah. in uh, small countries like Colombia yeah. or in um, third world countries, like they used to call it. Yeah. And uh, it, this formula has been used over and over and over. Yeah. I, I just never imagined in all the years that I have been here living in New York that I will see that apply here to America itself. In that the... Um, um, United States citizens are not able to kind of uh, see where this is going, uh, you know, where, this, where is the goal of this? Because creating chaos and, and promoting hate between uh, groups of uh, the population and all that, that is, has been the formula, the winning formula for the stream drive for so many decades. So if you go to Africa, and Africa has been used so many times and is taking lives of hundreds of thousands of people, and same as in Central America and South America. So that's what's happening here too. So I wanted to, to see you. Welcome to, to Face to Face, Tatiana. And I wanted to, to get a sense for you, how you, do you see the situation uh, in Colombia now and, and at the use of younger uh, generation, how do you see uh, the, the, the process of overcoming this situation? And in this moment, Colombia has been going through uh, with a lot of problems of politics problems, economic problems, uh, with the education. And now the new generation, we are, we are not we don't believe in all the things that they say. So in this year, the last year, Colombia and all South, mostly of South America, and they were like waking up of everything and they start to make protests. The problem with what, what with this situation with the coronavirus, everything is tough. But all the countries you see, Chile, Mexico, in Bolivia, Ecuador, yeah. all these countries, they start to, to say, no, this, this is impossible because it's a lot of injustice. And we can, we can um, permit that these things happen. Yeah. So in my case, I know I can say we are more con con concerned about this situation because I'm, I came from a public university. Yeah. So mostly the public university are more concerned about the situation in our country. But anyway, if you see the protests, if you, if you look at the protests, who is, who is, who is in, this, in these activities, you also see people that they come from private universities. They mostly people that with all ages. So that that say that something is happening. The people is tired of this. The people is not gonna. They we just we just cannot stand this situation. So now with this guy Uribe, this ex president, his his image. Uh, his picture or all the ideas that he represents now is going low. It's going, the people is, is saying, okay, something happened because now he's, he's guilty for a lot of things and now his face is just going down. Oh. So, so yeah, just Tatiana, to explain that Yuri B has been arrested and is under house arrest Uh -huh. for, uh, 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 for corruption and, and crimes and he has committed for a long, long time. So uh, I, I think that's what Tatiana wanted to explain. Yeah. Maybe, um, maybe he doesn't go to the jail, but just the way, just the thing that he's now in a process, that say a lot of, a lot of things about him and his poetry. Yeah, yeah. And and do you see do you see any political movement or political action from the youth? Do you see the youth registering to vote? Do you see the youth become more active politically, uh -huh. or, or how do you see it? 
it's not like we 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 are we we have preference about what uh, especially Patrick, but we see we see everything as a active, like more independent about all the traditional parts. We see like different. We are tired of this. Yeah. We don't want to be from this or this side. Yeah. Included in the middle. We are not agree with that. <laughs> we have some positions that say, okay, we need a change. That's it. Uh -huh. We need a change. Yeah. Uh, you know, David, um, I was for a year in Colombia. I was, um, I went to Colombia um, uh, last year, uh, um, like in June last year. Okay. And I stayed in Colombia for the major demonstrations um, that were um, last year, what they call El Paro Nacional, National Strike. Uh -huh. And uh, I was um, basically every day living with young people, with indigenous young people, with um, Afro-Colombians young people. And that is a totally different country that my generation see. I always have been in the rebellious side, I'm not gonna deny that, but I think that the youth, Colombian youth, uh, also, that is more active in politics, but but um, I think that is a new sense of we want a country in peace. We want a country that give us education. We want a country that give us oppor opportunities. And I think that is basically what they are fighting for. They are not fighting my uh, generation fights between uh, you know liberals and conservatives, and, and they don't believe in that. And they see the world in a very different way. Yeah. So I, I can see what what Tatiana has been saying. Like this, we we call we call, we call uh, the community, you know, to to go to Times Square uh, two weeks ago. And most of the people that were there were young people, and they were like, "What are we doing? What are we doing now? We we cannot allow this to happen." They are so frustrated with this government because basically this government is telling them, no, we're going to go back to that always. We're going to go back to war and they don't want that. It's not because they have extreme left point of view or nothing like that. It's just because they are sick and tired of corruption, of uh, feeling that they have no future in Colombia, basically. So, and that's a big difference between the generation before yes. Tatiana, the people left Colombia and they went, they immigrate in Spain, they immigrate in Europe, they immigrate in, in, in North America, they immigrate in Canada, they immigrate. And, and they say, it's nothing we can do in Colombia. Listening to, to you guys, it seems to be that the youth are like, we need to resolve the issue in Colombia and we're not going to go anywhere and we're going to fight it with new weapons and new tools and new uh, way of, and don't believe in a formal democracy as is presented. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting this correctly or no? Yes, but uh, you're getting this correctly. I think that, um, let's say I was in the Amazonian side of Colombia yeah. with a young indigenous people there. And their perception of the war is we going to defend this land with everything. Yeah. And in the Maloca, they were having internet and they have all these um, ways of communications that probably many years ago, I don't have that sense um, that Colombia have, that those, um, that new vision that, that is needed, you know? Uh, so I think that that's what I support that uh, young people get involved very soon in, into politics. And if I could recommend something is to help them to qualify them, to, to give them the tools they need to be able to do their fight. We have, I mean, we have, uh, we have a lot of experience in doing things. And if we can help to uh, uh, give context, to give uh, larger views, to give uh, tools of nonviolence, I think mm -hmm. it would be uh, uh, a very, uh, very interesting. Um, Elizabeth, before we close the, the, the show, do you have anything you want to plug or any information that you yes, know? Yes, yes. And, and then tell us what's okay. happening also in New York, please. Okay. So one of the things that are happening, terrible things that are happening in the last um, month in Colombia is after Mr. Uribe was uh, put in under the house arrest, uh, they start to target young people as new victims of massacres. 
So we have already, like in the last month, we have a, around, I think around 50 people that have been very young people, youngest as 14 years old and no older than 25 years old. So wow. that's really scary yeah. because we know that the people that are coming out to protest are the young people the most. Yeah. So if they are targeted for simple things are, um, let's say it's easier for the government to minimize everything he says, uh, Mr. Duque said, oh, no, 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 it's no massacres. We don't have massacres in Colombia. What we have is collective homo homicides. Yeah. I was like, okay, uh, things like that, you know, in, in the government, some, some people uh, in the government, not, not the president, but some people in, in his party start to um, discredit the victims, like, oh, maybe they were doing something wrong, you know? Maybe they were involved with the criminal bands and something like that. So what we're doing now around the world, Colombians around the world and in Colombia, is to start to protest all this targeting, this new targeting that is not just social leader, ambientalist, you know, in, in, in people that defend um, their territory, yeah. people that community organizers, yeah. but also very young people, as yeah. I say, as young as 14 years old, especially mm -hmm. Afros, indigenous, yeah. and people from the countryside, but also in the cities, in the, uh, let's say, in the areas, in the neighborhoods, very poor neighborhoods, where, where the people that are displaced come, they start to get a uh, select uh, young people uh, to, to get killed. Yeah. And this is just crazy. I mean, like in a month, about uh, 50 people, they were tortured, uh, they were um, assassinated in ways that are like, I mean, it's not easy to describe. So yeah. what we're doing is protesting. Um, but uh, 4th of September in uh, Washington Square Park, we're going to have some artists uh, singing. We're going to have some, uh, you know, artistic, artistic, musical groups. And we're going to have young people like Tatiana and other young people uh, with us, the, the old generation, a uh, Colombian activist uh, for peace. And we demand that this government of the United States and the public of the United States know that we, we don't going to take a no for an answer. It has to be because, you see, for example, last week in Miami, they were ready to name a street under Alvaro Uribe's way. I mean, we don't gonna take that. We don't gonna take that because this is supporting this people is that are killing that people. Good. This is so crazy. You know, it's, it's so we are saying, you know, if the, Colum the plan Colombia that now is called Colombia Crece, is gonna be used to bring glyphosate to Colombia and it's gonna be used to bring uh, troops, American troops to Colombia and to bring all this um, military force to Colombia to kill young people in Colombia. We also want the American people to know that if you don't start to buy this cocaine that is produced in the South, you are guilty too of these deaths. You know, so it, it, it's not going to be any more of this. It's, it's because they are in the South and they are a third world country that they are doing this. No, 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 no. This war is financed here. So we want the people to know in Europe and in America that we know that you know. You know because we are telling you yeah. that this war is financed here and we don't gonna take this anymore in South America. And we don't want a uh, um, war between Venezuela and Colombia and Brazil and Colombia. We don't want any, any, anything like that. And we don't gonna take no for an answer because you know, it, this has to stop. At some point, uh, this has to, Everybody has to take responsibilities, you know. Uh, September 4, 6 p.m., we're going to have there this demonstration. And we are very happy if we receive some support from all of you guys. That was your show face to face. And please keep watching your news on Presenza.com. And we hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you.